the previous video we saw how to retrieve data through fetch xml in this video we'll be looking at how to deploy a plugin today we're going to be talking about the deployment of a plugin so once you've de once you've developed the plugin now you need to deploy it on the server for it to be run for it to be tested etc so first let's go ahead and uh, sign the assembly so to do that right click on the assembly and click on properties okay and uh, open the signing tab and uh, this one would have been unchecked so just check that and uh, in this click on new go ahead and uh, give a name for it and enter a password if you wish to click ok now you have completed signing this particular file now you can go ahead and uh, build the solution Once the build is succeeded and open the plugin registration. Create new connection. If it's your or online organization, enter the credentials. Click login. Once you've done that, click on register, the down arrow next to it and click on register new assembly. Now go ahead and open the, click on the, uh, click on that. So click on this and open the folder in which the which the project is created okay and then go to bin debug and open the, double click on the dll which has been created for your project click open and in that it will show the list of plugins which have been created okay so in my project there are two plugins sample create read and sample update delete so all that will be uh, shown in the list and you need to register all the all the plugins so one important thing to note is if if yours is an online organization then you uh, the isolation mode will be only sandbox you cannot choose the method none and similarly the uh, location where the assembly is going to be stored will be database for online organizations it is only for on premise where you can choose none and disk or gas gap so yeah um, sandbox means that you are registering the uh, plugin in an isolation mode so if there is any error only that particular user will get it the issue will be isolated so uh, if it's none it is registered for the entire organization and the entire organization will get the error so uh, so yeah now uh, that is the difference between sandbox and none similarly um, database means the plugin will be registered in the database of crm and um, if it's disk it will be stored on the crm server hard disk or if it's a uh, GAC, it will be stored in the global assembly cache, cache of the CRM server. That's the difference. So once you've, um, so these are the options. So um, if it's an online organization, there's not really much to like, you know, select. It's all um, the default options. So you just click on register plugins. 
you'll get this message saying that the plugin is registered so click on ok so once that plugin is registered now you will see the uh, once that assembly is registered I'm sorry uh, you will find the plugins which is which has also been registered so now if you want to run this particular plugin say sample create read operation then what you need to do is you need to right click on it and click on register new step all right so this is a new window which will open up and in this what you need to do is you need to start off by giving all the information for uh, for uh, the step which you're going to register the first one which you're going to give is the message on what which with what is the triggering point for the plugin is it going to be create of a record or update of a record delete of a record etc so for my example I'm just going to be doing it on create of a record so that's my create and then the uh, primary entity means the entity on which it needs to be run the plugin needs to run so for my example I'm going to be running it on the account entity okay now the next one is secondary entity we no longer use this we no longer use this uh, secondary entity functionality because uh, this one is applicable only for two messages that is set related and remove relation and those are deprecated and hence we don't need to uh, use secondary entity anymore okay the second one the next one is the filtering attributes so filtering attributes means like so it means that so let's say if I do it on update right then on which fields updates does this uh, does this record needs to run right so right now it's saying all attributes whereas now if I want to run it on a specific change of, on uh, on change of a specific field then I need to select which field so say if I want to um, run on the change of an account number or account name I just need to select only those two then it will run on update of the name of an account or the account number of an account so that's the use of filtering attributes so the filtering attributes will obviously not be applicable for create because uh, we cannot like you know uh, just r r r update it on I mean like we cannot like you know filter it based out of certain fields for create so so yeah and the event handler is going to be uh, this one um, the sample create read operation and uh, generally we don't uh, change the step name so leave it as it is and then the next one is run in users context on which users context it's going to run meaning on who's going to be uh, like you know triggering the plugin so right now it, by default it is set to the calling user so if this plugin is now registered and it's been deployed to the CRM server in that organization if say user X is creating an account then the new so this plugin is actually creating a contact okay so that's the use of this plugin so what what will happen is if this is run in users context of calling user then if the user X is like um, uh, like you know creating an account then the contact will also be created with the owner set to X because he is the one who is calling the plugin okay so uh, so yeah that is uh, calling uh, run in users context and there are so many options like this so you can select any one of them um, which you want to do but generally we use calling user only or delegated admin okay next one is execution order 
so if there is multiple steps which is running on create of an account then and say it is running on pre post operation everything is running on post operation of create of an account then you need to mention which plugin needs to come first okay which plugin needs to get executed first and then second third etc so that that's what is the execution order so this means that if there are multiple plugins which is running on create of an account after the record is being created then this one will be executed first if this is set to two this one will be executed second and the, the plugin which is set to first that will be executed first so yeah that is the execution order next the post operation uh, so the event pipeline pipeline stage of execution we have three options pre-validation pre-operation and post operation pre-validation is the stage which is like basically it executes before anything else even before validation if the triggering action is allowed based out of the security of the user so it would be possible to trigger the plugin code even without actually having the permission to do so like for example if the user does not have delete permission he would still be able to run a pre-validation plugin on on the message of delete of of an account so uh, so yeah you need to have great consideration when uh, writing a pre-validation plugin because it can lead to a lot of security related issues generally this is not recommended but um, but yeah so uh, that is pre-validation pre-operation is when the um, validation is completed but before the changes has been committed to the database that is when uh, that is the pre-operation post operation is post operation is when uh, the changes are being committed to the database after like you know the the required uh, action has been completed that is when it is going to execute the plugin and then execution mode asynchronous or synchronous as the name indicates if it's synchronous then the user cannot do anything until the plugin is executed uh, the user needs to wait on that same page till that plugin needs to be executed asynchronous means the user can carry on doing other activities while uh, the plugin is getting executed in the background that's the difference between synchronous and asynchronous execution deployment uh, we generally do only server but uh, if your organization is set to run offline without internet as well then uh, and if the plugin needs to run on offline mode as well just click on offline that's it so yeah the, these are the different objects of like you know register new step and once you've selected all this just click on register new step So yeah, your step is created. Now you can, uh, it's always good to just uh, select the assembly and click on save. So yeah, that's how you register a plugin and a step. In the next two videos, we'll be looking at how to debug a plugin through two different methods.